Welcome back. Good to have you with us here at 5.30. Tonight, 17 News begins a five-part series on the latest drug epidemic sweeping the country, fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that is turning up disguised as every drug you can find on the street, from oxycodone to heroin, and it is killing people in numbers we haven't seen before. Fentanyl killed 81,000 people across the country last year, including 125 in Kern County, and those numbers are growing. As of last week, the Kern County coroner confirmed 61 fentanyl deaths so far this year. 17's Robert Price, who has devoted four months to this story, learned fairly quickly that fentanyl is not an ordinary drug. It is not the sort of manageable high that many think it is. Fentanyl is unpredictable. And people oftentimes don't even know that's what they're taking. In these stories, you'll hear the phrase, but it was too late many times. We're telling these stories so families can talk to each other about this killer now before it's too late. Fentanyl was a problem before the pandemic. They're selling death. Straight fentanyl. Fentanyl. He was laying right there on the bed. Will they kill you? Sure. This should not have happened. You know, and it happened to me. And he was trying to do CPR on him. We see it more and more. She was a good kid, but she tried to self-medicate. There's nothing else you can do, and they said no. There's ways you can die. People who are dying from overdoses of fentanyl. I can't treat you once you're dead. It's killing our children. We have to, as a community, figure this out. You've heard of Russian roulette. Slide one bullet into an empty six shooter, spin the chamber, point it at your head, and pull the trigger. One in six, not good odds when the cost of losing is so irreversibly final. But those are better odds than you'll get buying a counterfeit painkiller on the streets of Bakersfield if it contains fentanyl. And chances are good it does. The DEA conducted a year-long analysis of seized counterfeit oxycodone and found that 27% of the pills, more than one in four, contained what could have been, should have been, a fatal dose of fentanyl, the synthetic opioid that killed 81,000 Americans last year, including, according to the coroner's office, 125 in Kern County. Today, I'll tell you the story of one of those people. Sometimes it seemed like Tyler Cabral could do anything, anything, Juggling a golf ball and then whacking it in midair, Tiger Woods style. Swishing a basketball from the roof to the driveway below, backward, blind, and one-handed, Harlem Globetrotter style. Executing a screaming wheelie 100 yards down the street like a motorcycle stuntman. But Tyler Cabral couldn't manage one challenge. He couldn't beat fentanyl. He told his parents he could. He told his girlfriend he could. He may even have told himself he could. But in the end, on September 9, 2020, fentanyl won. Before that, though, no challenge seemed too great. Golf, soccer, snowboarding, wakeboarding, motocross, especially motocross. He had that fearlessness that separates the guys in the back of the pack from the ones battling for the lead. And he had 150 motocross trophies to prove it. Just such a natural at anything he did. The kid was just fearless. That fearlessness got him in trouble, though. He was hurt so often the injuries sometimes overlapped. He broke his jaw riding a scooter when he was 16. And two weeks later, having had most but not all of the wiring removed from his mouth, he entered a motocross race. He crashed again, breaking his femur. All the little brackets cut his mouth when he fell and he was bleeding. And I was telling the paramedics, because they pretty much know all the families. And, you know, and I was like, oh my God, be careful with his jaw. I go, his jaw's broken. And he looked at me and he goes, how do you know? I said, because he just broke it like less than two weeks ago. Later, Tyler broke his wrist, and later still he dropped his motorcycle when he slipped on fresh tar while doing another wheelie. Here he is, caught on video, shot by a friend just wearing a helmet, t-shirt, shorts, and flip-flops. The result? Epic road rash. More pain, more oxy. Deeper dependency. By that time, age 20, he was addicted to painkillers prescribed by various doctors. Once, Cheryl dropped Tyler at a doctor's office, then without leaving the parking lot, picked up her cell phone. And I called him and said, look, he's addicted to Oxy. You cannot give him anything in that family. Eventually, his doctors cut him off. So, like many others have done, he turned to the street, where counterfeit oxycodone is inexpensive and abundant, because it's usually not oxycodone at all. It's fentanyl, a cheap synthetic opioid up to 100 times more potent than morphine. Not only is street fentanyl potent and addictive, it's also more dangerous than pharmaceutical opioids because it's not prepared with the same stringent standards used in the industry. Those who work in criminal operations mix the ingredients for counterfeit oxycodone pills with whatever device fits their operation, from commercial-sized mixers 
to blenders used to make smoothies, all the way down to ordinary household coffee bean grinders. If they don't blend the ingredients thoroughly enough, however, the distribution of fentanyl in the mixture that they press into pills may be inconsistent, and some pills may contain too much. When that happens, invariably, someone dies. That's the bullet in the chamber in this game of Russian roulette. Tyler Cabral had made that transition from legitimately purchased opioids, highly dangerous but at least regulated, to the work of criminal amateurs. Tyler couldn't get himself off that either. And then it got scary. Tyler knew he needed help, but he was in the grip of something powerful, something relentless. In early 2020, he overdosed three times within just a few days. Each time, his girlfriend Leah recognized his shallow breathing and ran down the hall to wake up Cheryl and Tyler's father, Fred. Each time, they brought him back. Each time, until September 9th, 2020. That night, Leah wasn't there. I go to bed, I'm laying there, and I, it was on my mind. It was really heavy on my mind. 1.30, I'm still wide awake. 2.30, I'm still wide awake. At 3.30, I'm still wide awake, and I just kind of said out loud, like, God, what are you trying to tell me? Do I need to go check on him? And then I talked myself out of it and said, no, Cheryl, you promised that you wouldn't be a helicopter mom, you know. The next morning, she opened his bedroom door with a sense of dread. I walked over so slow, and I just put my hand on his stomach. And I just, yeah, I knew I could just tell. And I just went, Tyler, and I grabbed his face. And as soon as I grabbed his face, I knew it was cold. Cheryl was too distraught to open the deadbolt for the paramedics, so they kicked in the front door. She listened from the couch downstairs as they tried to save her son. Is that it? Like, there's nothing else you can do? And they said, no, it's, it was too late. Even just helping one person a day, guys, you don't understand how that could change the world. If everybody helped one person a day, it adds up. Tyler Cabral must have felt invincible. At times, he seemed invincible to everyone else, too. That's the awful irony of his story. He shrugged off danger practically every day of his life, but couldn't overcome the shackles of a little pill. Fentanyl did to Tyler Cabral what speed and gravity couldn't. It killed him. He was far from alone. In 2020, fentanyl, by itself and in combination with other drugs, was responsible for at least two and a half overdose deaths per week across Kern County. That's 10 a month. Why are we telling these stories? Because fentanyl, in the same chemical family as opium and heroin, but manufactured in a lab, is tearing Kern County families apart. Many don't know what's happening until their children are dead. They don't recognize the warning signs, physical and emotional and they don't grasp the unforgiving finality of a fentanyl overdose. What exactly is fentanyl? Where does it come from? And why is it suddenly so prevalent and so deadly? How does it get into the hands of our children, our siblings, our friends? And what can we do about it? Over the next four days, I'll answer those questions. For 17 News, I'm Robert Price. That piece, by the way, produced by 17 Steve Womack. Now, if you or someone you know is using counterfeit painkillers, which, like today's versions of heroin, almost certainly contain fentanyl, take note of these resources. We'll be reminding you all week long right here on 17 News and on our website, KGET.com. You can call the National Helpline 1-800-662-HELP. You can call the Kern County Behavioral Health Hotline, 1-800-991-5272, or you can visit narcanon.org or hhs.gov forward slash opioids, also drugfree.org forward slash treatment and recovery, or locally, you can check out the Facebook page here for stepsofchange.org or onedoorrecovery.org. Now, Robert Price joining us in studio. Now, Bob, a lot of uh, people might think that you're just talking to the drug addict out there, but that is not the case. Uh, you're, this, uh, this drug crosses all boundaries, doesn't it? It does, Jim. One of the tragic truths of this epidemic is that any of us, not just teens, not just 20-somethings, not 30-somethings, grandmothers, grandfathers, anyone can fall victim to this, especially if they at one time had a dependency on pharmaceutical oxycotin, mm -hmm. uh, Percocet, that sort of thing. Um, but not just those people, anybody, really, this can happen to. But so what can families do about this right now? Well, uh, number one, talk to your family members. Mm -hmm. I talked to my 25-year-old son. I took him aside and I said, look, I, I know 
this might seem silly, but I'm going to talk to you like you're 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And this is serious business, and you have to, uh, you know, know who you're talking to and what you're dealing with and, and what's going on. Once they leave the house, you know, it's up to them. So uh, talk to them. Uh, just have a conversation. Um, Second, clean out your medicine cabinet. Get rid of any opioid painkillers you might have left over from an old injury or an old surgery. Oxy, Norco, uh, Vicodin, whatever it might be. I did that for, I had an old shoulder surgery. Kept that stuff around in case I fell out of a tree. I'm not going to fall out of a tree. I got rid of that stuff, just got it out of the house completely. Don't, don't flush those drugs down the toilet, though. Hold on to them. We have, periodically, we have a drug uh, disposal events around yeah. town and around Kern County, so you can do it that way, too. That's right. Uh, there, there are guidelines out there for uh, what can be flushable and what is not. Finally, get yourself some Narcan. Uh, if you have a business with any number of employees, uh, could be a customer, somebody you pass on the sidewalk outside your business, uh, $60, uh, $60 for a two-pack, or you can call Bakersfield Recovery Services. You can find them online. They will give you some Narcan. They'll give you a free uh, two-pack. And, um, Which is used to revive somebody who's in the throes exactly. of overdose. Right? Exactly, it's a uh, uh, it's a nasal spray. They'll uh, uh, there's instructions, a special way to uh, go about it, but it, it can save lives. It does save lives. Okay. And finally, uh, for your kids, call your school principal and say, "What do you know about this? What are you going to do about it? Are you alert to this?" Okay. What about tomorrow night? What's coming up? Tomorrow night, we're going to talk to Becky Torres, uh, who will tell us about her daughter Brooke Torres. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, another cautionary tale coming up tomorrow. Yeah, very right. yeah. eye-opening. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. All right. California's long-standing ban on assault-style weapons, no more, at least for now.